Hello, everybody. This is Ellen Baker Dubois from businessenglishalure.com. And we're back today with another video, Ask an Expert. It's a series of interviews with experts from the field of English as a foreign language. Today, our guest is Gabriella Kovacs. She's originally from Australia and has been working as an EFL teacher trainer in Budapest since 1996. She got her master's degree in education in 1999. She's here with us today to talk about this new concept of language coaching. She's been a coach since 2017 and is co-founder of the International Language Coaching Association. She'll explain the difference between language training, as we know it, and language coaching. There are certainly aspects of coaching that you as an EFL trainer could use in your classes. Let's meet Gabriella. It's so nice to, to have you here, Gabriella. I'm, I'm so happy. Uh, could you uh, explain uh, the difference between a trainer and a coach right okay well a trainer would training in general has a top-down approach to basically the whole situation of, of training of uh, transferring skills teaching is about transferring knowledge training transferring skills primarily and knowledge also and coaching would be supporting development of the approach, the mindset to skills and knowledge acquisition, basically. That's, so that, that's kind of the difference. Training We're is working on the mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working on the mindset, working on um, how someone views themselves as, as a person in connection to the issue that they have, the challenges that they're facing, etc. With language learners, it's about how they see them themselves and how they can overcome the obstacles or the the stress or any kind of negative issue that they have with their language learning so they want to move forward they want to move on with it now training is going to be top down because the trainer or the training organization language school whatever or the company who is the stakeholder in the situation has their own expectations their goals their requirements and the attendees do not have too much say in what will actually happen in the tra training process right so they're put put okay. into it and if they're lucky they're actually going to make progress if not they have still attended and kind of you've got the the boxes ticked right so that that's how it goes um obviously um this is a very simplified thing and i'm not putting down trainers or teachers but no, this is no. what happens there's a top-down approach in coaching, we, there's a very clear framework for how the coaching process works, what the steps are, what kind of techniques, what kind of um, background knowledge the coach needs to have, competencies, skills, etc. So there, there's a very clear um, way to identify who works as a coach and who just kind of calls themselves a coach. However, the, there's a, a bottom-up approach into the there's no content that a coach is going to bring into the process. So they're not going to tell the, the client, the learner what to do, but they're going to be asking a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot of immediate feedback on the conversation that they are having. Um, so it's, it's much more about presence, being very much present in the process with the client and um listening actively so that's a very strong skill that um coaches need to possess and so basically we're not bringing anything into the process so we don't know what the outcome will be either so there's no guarantee of what outcome a coaching process can have which is i think very interesting My, it could be unsettling uh, for a yes. for a teacher you know not to be in control yes yes very much so yes <laughs> oh, well, that sounds great. Um, what would a first class look like? A first session look like? Right. Okay. From a coach's point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
As I mentioned before, that coaching has a, a pretty strict framework. Uh, so there's there's no content in the process itself. So the coach doesn't bring any content, but works with the framework of having a chemistry call, first of all. So a 15, 20 minute conversation where they like that name, chemistry yeah, call. Chemistry call. So basically, we see whether the chemistry works between the coach and the client or clients or a group. So they basically they have to decide whether, yes, they agree to work with each other or no, this is not a good fit. We're not going to be able to you know, um, support each other in, in the even, even for the group members. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that, that's how it would work. Obviously, there are situations when the chemistry call is much more about um, identifying what goals the learner has, what expectations they have, and to basically for the coach to decide whether those goals can be coached or not. You know, so yeah. some people might have expectations about coaching, which are not for coaching, but for training. So if someone says, okay. I, I, I need better vocabulary, then, you know, there's not much a coach can do. A coach can help them to identify processes in which their vocabulary can be boosted productively. So we can work on that. Or if they find it difficult to learn new words, then we can work around that and try to find ways in which they can be more effective language, you know, vocabulary learners. But I'm not going to teach them new vocabulary in a coaching session, right? So after the chemistry, we decide, okay, we can work on work together. We can, um, the, the goals seem okay. So they can be coachable. Then I send out a coaching contract. And we also look at uh, what it is uh, that the uh, process itself contains. So I send out a document describing what the coaching process is, how it works, what kind of techniques, you know, not, not too technical, but just, you know, uh, one or two pages of what, what to expect, okay? So that it's not a kind of, well, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I want to buy into this, if I want to pay for it. And, you know, so just to, to clarify the uncertainty. And then we have once the, this and, agreement- and, you know, to to, to manage expectations as well. It's nice to see everything clearly uh, written up. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I work, for example, I work a lot on, you know, to making it, so it, it looks really nice. So I, you know, color coordination, you know, pictures uh, like that. So it's really nice. Um, and so the coach, she, the client has to go into the process feeling completely secure and mm -hmm. okay with the situation. Okay, that's really important. We have to build yes. trust. Yeah, so it's it's a new thing for them, for some of them. Um, and then the coaching begins. We have the first so-called intake session where we identify uh, once again what the goals are, what the learning history of the learner is, where they're coming from, what it is that has happened so far, which has been helpful, has not been helpful. And primarily we're looking at where they are now, what they need, and to identify those goals, to be more specific, to break them down into some goals, whatever we create an action plan and we start an focusing on plan. how they can reach it. Yes, an action plan indeed, yes. So that, that's kind of the, the end of the first session. That, that's the goal that you want to have. It doesn't always happen because sometimes the conversation just takes a completely different turn. That's why there's no objective. I can't say, yes, the objective of the intake is to have an action plan. It doesn't always happen. Okay, so <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, you need to have a certain level uh, to accept spontaneity and uh, accept uh, change and lose a yep. little control. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you've mentioned control twice now. It's all about pushing in a positive way, but pushing the responsibility onto the client so that they get the control panel. So it's a little bit like, you know, when you're learning to drive and you've got the, you know, the instructor next to you. And it's always kind of a safe bet because they can always step on the brakes. They can yeah. always change gear for you or whatever. But in, I think in coaching, what we do is we say, okay, I'm going to sit next to you. 
and of course you can't do this with, when you're dri learning to drive a car, but you say, I'm just going to ask you questions, okay? I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> so it's, it's basically, it's free falling from the beginning. And it means that we trust, we believe that the learner does have solutions, does have ideas. They're, they're not in therapy. We're not talking about someone who has some kind of um, serious issues in their life. It's not life coaching, of course, but the outcomes, the results of the coaching process can impact other areas of their life. Like if, if we're coaching somebody on uh, issues in their communication in a business context where they feel they, they should be more assertive and they should be able to represent themselves better in English or German or French or whatever, then obviously yeah. without consciously working on that, it's going to impact on their communication, not only in the workplace, but probably with their family or friends, etc. So, so there is a bit of, you know, um, um, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> so what, what happens when um, somebody has a request like, okay, I want to boost my vocabulary. And I say, well, you know, we can work on that, but then I wouldn't be coaching you. I would be training you or teaching you. Are you okay with that? So I can switch roles and I do work with clients coaching them in the, it's primarily initially when I coach someone and then it might turn into teaching or training. Okay. And I also like to, I call it coaching approach, training or teaching because I do insert bits and pieces of coaching in between the process so it's not fully only training because when I see that there's an issue then I do say okay can I just ask you a few questions can we just look into this a little bit with my coaching hat on and you know you always coach with permission so uh, this might be uh, interesting for a lot of teachers is to be able to do both to to change those hats uh, yeah. you know <laughs> with permission of course yeah That's sure Mm. What, what happens is that pe teachers, professionals, practitioners um, acquire the skills of coaching, which means that you're, you're not going to be a certified coach. But um, in, I mean, I've been doing teacher training for a few years now. And in my experience, teachers don't need a specific certification, you know, that I'm, I'm a certified language coach. Um, it might be your path. It might not be. I think what is much more important is to be able to incorporate those skills and utilize them in the lessons that you have. So that's something which I think is, is really important. So to actually acquire those skills so that you will be able to, to work with them. And it's going to be a win-win because you're going to be happy because your learners are happy. So it's kind of, that's so, yeah. So instead of you feeling stuck and your learners feeling stuck in certain oh, situations, yes. Yeah, you're going to have the tools and the techniques to to stop and say, okay, can we can we have a discussion around this because I think this is important, and then you you kind of resolve that issue and then you move on. So that's oh, that's I think that sounds that sounds great to me because I had uh, I had experiences in the past where uh, I just you know felt so frustrated. Uh, I I felt so. Uh, I had so much empathy for, you know, the, my students and they were, they were in very stressful situations and, and they had a lot of baggage from the past, uh, uh, right. critical teachers and school uh, humiliation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think these kind of coaching skills uh, would, would help a lot of teachers. Absolutely. And, uh, and I mean, you know, you mentioned this baggage you know, and that's something and, uh, you know, how to empathize or sympathize with, with students. That's something which um, coaching can help overcome because, you know, there are limitations to how much empathy you can give and how much sympathy, which is, of course, it's important and we're people, right? So it's not that a coach is not empathic, you know, but you do need to know that that's not, not going to move your learners forward towards their goals. So they can be complaining and coming up with excuses and having, you know, life issues, which are, you know, not helping them to, to do homework. Okay. It was a very, very simple example. Um, and you can say, I hear you. I, I totally understand your situation. What is it that we can do now that will help you? to be able to focus on your homework. 
for example. So that's how a coach would communicate this kind of situation instead of saying, oh, I, yeah, I, I, t I know, I know this must be really difficult for you. And, and yeah, I think it's really terrible. And, you know, and you're, you're basically, you're just, oh, yes. I... <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. kind of, it's not really helpful to, to just stay with the empathy part of it. Okay. So I can, so I can to of... totally see that. Uh, you, you've been a coach since 2017. Uh, how has your freelance business, how has, how has that changed for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we were talking earlier a little bit about this. And um, one thing that has changed is the way that I communicate about my coaching business. Um, obviously, over the years, you become much more confident and you, you realize what it is that you can do and what you, you cannot or do not do in your business. And I try to stay ethical all through. So not only um, in the coaching process, but in the business part also. So I don't overcharge, you know, and there, there are just things that I think um, coaching has had some pretty bad rap. Because oh. There are some very interesting gurus around which, I mean, some of them absolutely justified that they, you know, they work with top executives worldwide. They've got this huge big, you know, um, uh, name that they have built for themselves. So it's absolutely justified that they, they will be, you know, earning quite nice amounts. But there are also some who come across as, as scams, perhaps, and they just, you know, yes. gather groups around them and they, they earn thousands and thousands in, you know, and it's, for, for me, those are not always justifiable. So um, I've got some, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're careful some, with that. Yeah, be careful with that. But what, what for example, I, I have... Uh, niched down into is working one-to-one -one or with small groups um, to support their um, communication, their performance in their own businesses. Okay, so that's what I work with um, internationally and, and also locally in Hungary where I work. Um, I've been supporting um, startups and also a few, uh, one or two multinational companies where um, I've also introduced a, a coaching program and I work with a number of teachers there and I do the coaching part of it initially at the beginning of the program, which fires up the motivation and gets them really excited and more clear on what they can expect and what they want to do. So they kind of, it's thinking together, it's co-creating, you know, the, what's going to go on in the classes themselves and the teachers there, they're involved. And it gives them a completely different perspective and way to start the whole process of well, teaching just, the learners. I just, I just love that starting out with, uh, uh, with coaching and the teachers are present, and then this coaching leads into a, a, a training, a training program. Oh, that, yes. that, that sounds like a, that sounds like a really good product. It is. It is a very good product, and I've been called back again and again to recontract so it's it it seems that it's really good and the ROI is very high so the return on interest is very high because there there are just the attendance rate is above 90 percent generally you're part of an association the international language coaching association uh and we'll uh, we'll put that link in the description uh what can a teacher do today to to maybe start to investigate in becoming a coach right okay well the first step is to decide of course how much time and energy you want to put into it because you know becoming a coach is not about a weekend program so if someone you know says that you can call yourself a coach if you attend my program my program is uh -huh. long and you'll be a fantastic coach after that once again, take it with a pinch of salt, okay? Just be careful. I mean, you won't be a teacher in three days either. You won't be a coach in right. three days. Right. I mean, it's it's the same. It's just a different profession. So um, at, at the International Language Coaching Association, which we call ILCA for short, um, I'm the co-founder with um, Carrie McKinnon. And uh, we created this association to support language teachers who are on the, their journey to become coaches, language coaches, or who want to um, acquire the skills 
of coaching that they can use in their classes. So actually, you, you can you can decide we've got a four five part um, program, the field program, which we usually offer uh, teachers transitioning from teacher to coach and they're, they're somewhere on that journey. And they just want to get beyond the intuition part, you know, that I've been doing a lot of this intuitively great. OK, but do you have a framework? Do you have resources? You know, do you have handouts? Do you know what kind of tools you can use? actively in your classes so that you can actually call that coaching and, and you know learning active listening questioning skills all that so we go through that how to handle excuses so so these are things that we we work on how to motivate with coaching things like that and uh, basically we suggest going through the program with doing the foundation and expansion courses which are the first two parts where you learn the basics, the foundations of coaching, and then you can move on to the next two um, parts, which are about um, how to apply all this in a business context and what you can use from business mentality, business mindset, um, and uh, different kind of uh, skills that you can adopt from business and use it with a coaching twist and apply it in your classes. So business English teachers, I think this is your thing, definitely. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, we love that, you know, smart goals. And <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So that, that's just one of them. And you know, we've got a YouTube channel, we've got eBooks, we've got language coaching markers, which kind of um, list all the prerequisites for someone to be a coach or to be able to call themselves a coach. So there are a lot of resources there. We have a newsletter. I think that would be the first step of an okay. action plan. <laughs> so these things. Okay. So uh, everybody uh, listening today, if this looks uh, interesting, the first thing to do is is to uh, is to go to your website and yep. sign up for the newsletter. Yes. And have a look have a look at the course and and the different modules. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this this probably will be a long-term commitment if uh, if, uh, if if we decide to 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 become a real coach right absolutely I mean we're, we're just one organization there are a lot of organizations international coaching federation which is a you know it's the biggest global um, association for coaching so that's 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 a kind of rock you can you know count on to okay development so that's important um, and of course, you, you can do a small commitment thing, which is uh, joining our members only zone, which means that you get a lot of resources, goodies, articles, things like that. Um, members only zone. OK, that does sound good. All yes. right. Well, I'm sure, uh, you know, I'm excited and I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of the listeners today are to uh, thank you so much, Gabrielle, for uh, sharing your, your time with us today. Thank, Thank you very you. much for the interview. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>